y'all, my name is Cassie and I am the creator of Pieces of Scrap and in today's video we're going to be doing kind of a market prep vlog. I know a lot of people like watching those and crocheting along so I thought I'd do one for you guys. I've got a market coming up on February 10th. Um, it's Love Fest in Love Lady, Texas. It's kind of a small town and they do this every year. Um, so I'm going to be there and so I have been doing some prepping. I've also been doing some pattern testing. I specifically got chosen to be a tester for five patterns this month and I'm still working on more. It's already February and I got chosen to be a tester for two more patterns so I'm working on those now. I've got a commission, I've got a big gigantic yarn order, and then I bought some yarn from Walmart yesterday, and yeah, so let's just get started. So I wanted to do an unboxing of my yarn before I got into like what I've been testing and stuff like that. I'm really excited to look at the yarn I got because I'm running out of all of the colors that I really like. I'm finding more and more that when I order new yarn colors, I end up loving them a lot more than the yarn colors I already have. So specifically, I've been getting a lot of pastels and um, more, uh, you know, varied shades where you get mul multiple shades in one color. So let's look at my Bernat purchases from Walmart yesterday first. So I got two skeins of this Bernat baby blanket and the shade name is Lovely Blue and I absolutely love it. And this one was when I picked it up, I was so excited because it's a lot softer than Bernat yarn usually is. Usually Bernat is soft, like Premier is, but there's definitely a difference. Like this feels more like a squishy, whereas uh, the Ber Premier Parfait yarn is usually like feathery soft and it's really nice. Well, this one is a little bit softer than Bernat yarn is typically, so I was really excited about that. So I got two skeins of this. And then they also had it in this color. This one has more of that regular Bernat yarn feel to it. It's like denser. Um, this one is Raspberry Kisses. It's the same type of yarn, the same line, the Baby Blanket Bernat. So we've got those two shades and I got two of each of these. And then on top of that, I got a solid color Bernat and this is not a baby. This is just the regular blanket and it is in Twilight. I really like this cute color. It is just as soft as the the uh, lovely blue color, so that's awesome. It's nice to see that Bernat is rolling out softer yarns because that dense one is it's good for keeping for making like plushies that you need to maintain the structure of the pattern so that they're not like as floppy when you stuff them. But everybody likes a softer plushie, so I tend to go towards the softer yarn every time. So let me get this yarn out of the way and then we can get into this box and see what I got. All right, so for my great big yarn order, I am completely out of brown, so I got this chocolate, chocolate brown. Um, and I didn't want this dark of a brown, but they were all out of um, one of the light browns. It's not toffee, but the shade in between toffee and this one, I can't remember the shade name of that, but they're all out of that. So I ended up getting a dark brown. I got two of the shell. This is like one of my favorite premiere colors right now. This and this periwinkle blue color. This is, this is pale blue. So these two colors are like my favorite premiere colors right now. They're so pretty. I got more of the lilac because I'm completely out. This is actually the first shade of premiere that I ever bought. I got like a pack of six skeins or something on Amazon when I first bought this. So I'm finally out of those six skeins. So I had to get some more. If you have followed me for very long, um, you know my struggle with getting this key lime color from Premiere is always awful. It's always out of stock. It's like their best green. They have like three greens total. And this is the best one. I think everybody uses this for like leggy froggies and chunky froggies. And so yeah, I had to get a bunch of it, so I got four skeins. And then I wanted to try some new colors, so this is Rose, and it's like this dusty pink color. I really like it. It's like a 
in between a pink and a purple, it's pretty. I, I really wanna try it, I think it'll make some cute things. I am just about all out of white, so I got more white. You can never have enough white, almost every pattern calls for white, I feel like. I got one skein of cream because it's nice to have like an in-between color between yellow and white and one that can like suffice as like a skin color or like a muzzle color on an animal or something like that. So I got one of these. Of course I got a toffee since I'm all out of browns. Again, the brown that I wanted is the color that's in between these two shades, but they were all out of stock. I have like a, a uh, you can set up notifications on Premiere to like alert you when they get back in stock. So I have an alert for that, still haven't gotten back in stock, but I will definitely purchase more of the in-between color when they do get it in stock, because that's a very pretty brown. And then this is more of that pale blue. I got two more skeins of it, so I have four skeins total. I don't really remember ordering four, but I guess I'm kind of obsessed with this color, so it makes sense. I'm surprised I didn't get more of the shell, though. And then I got some peach. This is kind of similar to the pink lemonade color that they have. I was actually surprised that it was in here for a second because I thought it was the pink lemonade color. I already have like three skeins of that. I think I'm working through one of them so I might have like one and then one that is open and I'm working on. So I was like surprised that it was in here but this isn't pink lemonade, this is peach. So I guess on camera it looks like a lot more like a peach color than it does in person. It looks like a little pinkier in person but it might just be the lighting. I like it. so. I'll have to find something to make with this too. I got another mango. Um, I like this color of orange a lot more than, you know, like your typical neon orange. I feel like it's warmer and it's poppier, it's cool. So I got another skein of this. I only got one to, um, I only got one my last yarn order. So I ordered another one. I'm gonna work through this one. And then the final two skeins that I got were mint, which is actually my favorite color if you couldn't tell by my logo. So. Um, I got two skeins of mint. We'll see if this green color holds up, if it's going to be a better color than Key Lime. We'll see. I, I hope that um, either way, Premiere comes out with some more greens. That'd be awesome. So let me go ahead and pack this back up and then I'll show you guys my tested patterns for January. All right, so back into my pattern testing spiel. I was chosen for a lot of pattern testing. Um, this month, this past month, excuse me. Um, I was, I've just been a madman on Instagram, I feel like. I've been applying for just about every pattern testing call that I've seen and that I've come across, so, um, yeah. I, I was surprised that I got picked for as many as I did. I think it's partly because of some people began to recognize me from my YouTube channel and they see my pattern testing reviews and, um, you know, maybe that's drawing people in, maybe it's not, I don't know, but it's, it's really cool to see people recognizing me and saying, like, you know, that they like my YouTube videos and specifically my pattern reviews, so that is awesome, can't complain about that. So yeah, let's get into the patterns that I tested this month. So first up we have the Mushroom by Cone Crochet, this one is already released and it's a really quick pattern. It's really, really cute, and I was very grateful to work on this for Cone. And of course, this is kind of what sparked um, my inspiration to make my own mushroom pattern, which is this little guy. Um, he is quite different. You work him from the mushroom hood to the feet, whereas Cone's pattern, you work from the feet to the cone, or you work them separately and sew them together. I can't quite remember how it was worked. I think they're separate pieces though, I don't remember this being no sew. But yeah, so I wanted a no sew pattern with a cool hood and a cute little chunky body, a little pocket sized mushroom friend. So thank you Cone for the inspiration to make my own. And of course, because I made this pattern, I ended up making my broccoli boy pattern from inspiration of my baby shroom came the baby broccoli boy and he has the same basic pattern except the hood is different. So his hood is like his little florets, his head is made up of little 
bobble stitches. So we've got the same body but different tops and I'm hoping to adapt the pattern into lots of variety of uh, little guys and then eventually sell them in a pattern pack together on my Etsy. That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy to have made these patterns. Broccoli Boy is up on my Instagram for free, but if you don't have Instagram and you prefer a PDF pattern, I have him also for sale on my Etsy store, the pattern itself. Um, I may in the future make like commissions for little broccoli boys or little baby shrooms, um, but for right now, as of this moment, I don't know if that will change when this video gets posted. These guys aren't for sale like for the physical product, but the pattern for the Broccoli Boys should be up on my Etsy right now. So next up, I tested a pattern upon request. It wasn't a tester call and it was for Coffee and Crochet 01. This is for her Clownfish pattern. It's a free pattern on her Instagram. It's a really, really cute pattern. But she was just curious for me to review the pattern so that possibly in the future, she'll rewrite it to make it a little easier for beginner crocheters. Um, she was mostly worried that, you know, it was a little bit more difficult than um, typical beginner crocheters can handle. So I went through the pattern and gave her notes and I worked up this little clownfish boy and there's that mango yarn poking through again that I just got an order for. Um, so yeah, he turned out really cute and I'm really happy with what he looks like. Uh, Coffee and Crochet 01 has a lot of awesome patterns and she has mostly like no so market friendly patterns on her shop and so Definitely check her out if you haven't heard of her. She, a lot of the time, um, partners up with Poggy's Place. They make patterns together and they're always awesome. So check her out if you haven't already. Next up, I did a pattern test for Amethyst Claire handcrafted. I made these sloths and of course I was completely out of my brown yarns when I got accepted to be a pattern tester for this pattern. So I ended up doing it in Valentine's Day colors since I will be going to a Valentine's Day market pretty soon, so I figured that was justified. So I made some cute little uh, pink uh, sloths in these cute colors. The body color is very berry, and then I think the face color is either pink or ballet pink. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I love how they turned out. This pattern is really awesome, and it's available on her Etsy. So check it out if you are interested in trying it out. After that, I did a pattern test for Nook's Hooks, and it's this little garden bear. This gray one I ended up changing a little because I wanted a bunny, so I just single crocheted off his ears about 10 rows, and then I did a row of decrease stitches on the last one to kind of give it a slight curve at the end. So we've got a bunny gardener bear, <laughs> and then we have an actual gardener bear, and I just love this pattern. Her bears are completely no sew. Everything is worked onto the bear itself or into the rows themselves by a single crocheting on instead of having to sew, which is awesome. And I love the face shaping of the bear. They got like this squished chubby face and he looks like he has cheeks, which is really awesome. It's really cute. I went ahead and made like a bow for him and uh, did some cute little bloom chenille yarn for his overalls and his hat and I just think he is absolutely adorable. So of course I had to make two of them um, <laughs> and I am probably going to make a lot more in the future because this is by far my favorite bear pattern I have ever come across just because it's no sew, because it works up so quickly. From what I remember, I think these work up under two hours, so it's like an hour 45 or an hour 30. So that is significantly quicker and that can make the price range a lot cheaper for people and draw people in and want to actually make a purchase because they think something's so dang cute. And these guys seriously are so dang cute. <laughs> um, I almost forgot to say with Nook's Hooks um, pattern for this gardener bear. It's not just a gardener bear pattern, it's a gardener, it's a flower, a bee, and a mushroom. So there's four different variations of this no-sew bear pattern in the pattern pack, and you can purchase it on her Etsy. And then finally, when I thought January was almost over, this was literally like two or three days ago, I also got picked to do another pattern testing 
and I was really surprised that I got picked because, man, I feel like I had just applied the day before and then I got picked right away and I was like, man, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get another pattern test this month, but I did. So I got picked to do Penelope the Piggy. Penelope the Piggy is two parts. She's got the overalls and then the body. She is not no sew. There's quite a bit of sewing involved. So that took the finished product up from the gardener bears like one an hour and a half to hour 45 to two hours to make her um the overalls are one piece they're removable this actually isn't part of the pattern this little flower is a amigurumi free pattern from a designer on instagram i'll link her on the screen and in the description below i can't remember what it was and then I kind of like improvised her flower on her head because that's not included in the pattern either and I embroidered a flower onto her overalls so she is just so cute and she's got like a little piggy tail it's a little corkscrew piggy tail it's so cute and this is a really unique way to do ears too and they're so flattering on her you kind of act like you're gonna make like a, a sphere a circle shape and then you only sew one side of it onto the head so it kind of makes like this cone shape which is really cool and this has been by far the easiest um sewing intensive pattern that i've done for a big stuffy like this one so i was very happy to test this for Ami by Abby. Thank you so much for picking me, Ami by Abby. And she will have this pattern up for purchase on her Etsy store when it's released. So yes, finally, I am also working on a commission. I am hoping to kind of pack it up later in this video and um, try out my Moonbin printer and try to get it packed up so that it can ship directly from my house and I don't have to go to the post office or anything like that. That should be pretty convenient. But I wanted to show you what parts of it I have right now. I was waiting on my yarn order to finish it and I made one of the things that I had yet to make yesterday while I was um, at church while my husband was at worship team practice. So let's take a look at what I have. So first off, she wanted a brontosaur and she picked this color. I really, really love this pattern, this, this pattern by Kaylee Crochet. Um, and she just came out with a update to this pattern so that it's easier. And I have yet to try it, but I'm definitely gonna try it very soon because this is by all means one of my favorite patterns that I've ever used and tested. So I'm just very, very excited to try out that pattern. And yeah, so she got this one. And this is also um, that same Bernat uh, yarn that I get from Walmart. And this is um, one of the colorways that they have. I really like like the green and turquoise and dark blue speckling in it. It's really, really pretty. And then she wanted a chunky mushroom. She wants this one specifically, but she also wants two of these little chunky, the little baby shroom guys to match this one. So I'm gonna do white bodies and then the tops will be green with the dark green spots. So she has a little family of mushrooms. And then finally, she also wanted a corn. So how she came across me was I had my pop-up shop and I posted in Facebook pages around where I was located at um, for the pop-up shop. And she ended up seeing my post and she also, she actually saw my Junie the banana on the table and she said, is that a corn? And I'm like, no, it's not a corn, but I could make a corn using the same pattern. Um, so this is what Junie the banana looks like if you use green and yellow and flip her peels up instead of down, she becomes a corn on the cob. So very excited to send this off to my commissionee and um, finish up the mushrooms and stuff like that and pack up the order and show you guys what that looks like when it's packed up and kind of do like a pack an order with me. So. Yeah, see you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so it's been a while since I last updated this video, so I am about to pack my order for that commission I was talking about. I've got a brontosaur, this corn, a mushroom, and then two matching mushrooms. Uh, so this is all gonna go in this package to one person. I've got a bunch of leftover, um, 
tissue paper from Christmas. I'm gonna try to find some in here that isn't Christmas themed to kind of wrap this up, make it look nice for her. I've got a thank you card that I'm gonna put in here and then I'm probably gonna print out some pieces of scrap stickers and stuff like that, like thank you stickers and stuff to put inside for her to have with her uh, with her commission. So I just printed out my stickers. I'm gonna cut them out um, so that these are all each one sticker and then I'll make these into two stickers at the bottom here that have, that have my contact information. Um, I'm not gonna put both of them in here, but I'm gonna put my contact information on the back of this card uh, as a sticker. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's that, that's the back of her card. Put it in here. It's like having a reusable business card almost. It's pretty cool. So then I'm going to actually put these on the outside of my mailer so that she knows it's me, or at least if she doesn't in the future, she would know that Pieces of Scrap is my brand. Um, she did put this commission through me through like my personal Facebook page because um, I shared it my pop-up shop from my Facebook page and that's when she ordered so she might not know that my brand name is pieces of scrap but it's not a huge deal all right so I got my stickers on every side I'm going to um, print out a sticker to seal this and then I will probably print out some cute stickers that she might want for herself. Moonbin's got really cool stickers that are just like free um, clip art type things on their app so you can just stick them on a sticker and print them out and cut them out um, which is awesome and then you can color them in yourself so you can have any color that you want so I'm gonna try to find some like maybe some brontosaur stickers maybe mushroom stickers stuff like that to add to the box. So before we pack today's order, I wanted to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Moonbin. Moonbin sent me a free thermal printer a couple months ago, and I've been using it ever since to fulfill online orders, commissions in which I have to ship, and just generally to make like cool stickers, like my scan for contact info sticker, my uh, logo stickers, and things of that sort. It was actually really cool around Christmas time to seal all my envelopes for my Christmas cards with cool customized Happy Holidays stickers that I made in the app itself. And I've been using the app to make cool stickers to send with my commissions and orders just so that you have some matching stickers that you can color in yourself that match whatever you ordered from me. So for this commission, I made some Brontosaur stickers and some Mushroom Boy stickers a corn cob sticker and a bunch of other cute stickers that I thought that the requester might like and so I just packed those all in with my order and I thought they were all really cute. Alright so I just printed out the stickers. Look at these cute stickers. I couldn't find um, specifically like a brontosaur or a mushroom but I found like a corn found some of these cute things that I think she might like. Um, cool thing about Moonbin's app is that you can import images directly from your phone. Um, so if I really wanted to, I could find a brontosaur clip art or a mushroom clip art and I can add that into the app and print those out as well. Moonbin has a ton of free icons and stickers and images that you can grab from their app directly and place onto the label so that you can make your own sticker sheet but also you can save items to your phone and then add those images onto the labels directly hence how i got my logo on the stickers so it's really convenient for making cool labels and stickers that way so i'm really thankful again for moonbin for sponsoring me and this video and if you like their printer and want to try one out for yourself i actually have a link in the description that gets me a little bit of commission but it also has some discount codes in the description that you can use to get some money back off of your purchase so check them out in the links in the description if you are interested in getting your own
another sticker page done. These cute little mushrooms and this little brontosaur. I'm gonna cut them out. Here's the other ones that I cut out. I left like this little bit of the underneath so that they can easily peel them off because I definitely had a lot of trouble peeling this one off. It didn't have any left over. Um, so I cut them out just so that they have a little white outline. Cute little stickers that I'm gonna put in there. It's gonna be really cute. I'm gonna have them just like thrown in there and it's gonna fill up the whole space and be really cute. I'll show you guys what the box looks like when all the stickers are in here. So here's the package. I put the stickers in this little pouch and the envelope is right next to it. I'm gonna put it in here so that it doesn't get jostled too much and the stickers don't come out. I put these big bubble packers on top of all the tissue paper and everything and I also changed boxes because the other box that I was using um, it didn't seem like it would hold up very well in shipping. This one feels a lot sturdier. I'm gonna tape it up real well so it, it's pretty sealed and won't go anywhere. Hey y'all, so I'm getting ready to reprice all of my inventory right now. I recently decided to increase my prices from 5% profit to 20% profit because really without that, that, that bit of profit difference does make a lot of a difference um, to me personally because right now I'm not like making a whole lot of money on this and I'm trying to get to a point where eventually I am making quite a bit and it would like eventually replace my full-time job um, with all my different income revenue streams. Um, so I need to reprice all my inventory, long story short. Um, almost everything has a price change so I'm gonna have to go through all of my tags and make sure everything is tagged for the right price. I have all of my inventory prices in this notebook and then I'm also going to be taking stock of all of my inventory so I know what I have and how much of everything that I have. I'm updating my my Excel workbook to actually have all of my inventory in it and how much of each inventory, the SKU numbers, um, how many of those items that I've sold total and you know just going through keeping track of my inventory a little better because right now I have like a very rudimentary way of keeping track of inventory by like physically writing it down in, on paper, keeping sheets of paper inside of all my bins and totes and everything, post-it notes on the sides of boxes like you see over here in these Michaels boxes in the Premier box. Um, and I just need to do a little better at keeping track of my inventory and making sure it's correct, making sure it's accurate. So I'm gonna get working on that now and I thought I'd do a little time lapse for y'all while I did that. So I thought I'd show you guys quickly what I'm doing on this notepad here. This is where I'm keeping my inventory. I'm writing down the name of the inventory in this column and then in the middle I'm tallying how many I have total of that inventory. And then finally I'm writing down the price per item for each in inventory item. And so far the only thing out of my hats ca category that's changed is my beanies. My beanies went up in, the, in price whereas the rest of them I'm able to keep the same because that profit increase didn't affect the price that I had already set for it.
Hey guys, so it is Wednesday. My market's on Saturday and it's finally nice enough outside that I can do my mock setup. I meant to try to do it yesterday, um, but redoing all my inventory prices took way longer than I thought it would, so I didn't get to it. So I'm gonna do it today. Um, I wanted to show you guys two things that I made today and yesterday and during this week for tester calls. So I've got this koala that I finished today, Kiwi the koala, a really, really cute pattern. And then I have, this one's definitely my favorite, I've got Louis the lion and his mane took so long but I love how it looks and it goes all the way around his head, he's just so cute. And he's got this little dangly tail and his, all, all his arms are dangly. He's got these cute little ears poking out of his head and the embroidering on his eyes, I am so impressed on how it came out. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to, I already have most of my inventory downstairs in boxes like waiting to do my mock setup today. So I'm gonna get my stuff outside and then I'll do like a time lapse of me doing my mock setup. Hey friends, last time you saw me, I was on my way out the door to try to set up a mock setup in my yard. And this is just me telling you that that was not a success, but a failure. Um, and <laughs> I'll show a few bloopers from that here, but it was just a nightmare. Um, it was really windy that day and my stuff got knocked over multiple times and I thought it would have died down at some point, but the wind did not die down. And so I was setting up displays and they'd get knocked off the table and I was like, okay, it'll be fine once there's, you know, things on the displays, it'll help keep it from getting knocked down. And then I put things in the displays and then it still got knocked down. So about 45 minutes goes by and I just called it quits and brought all my stuff inside and I got a good idea of what I want my display to look like tomorrow at my booth. Um, my husband and I are gonna go to the event. We have an indoor booth space, so we're gonna set up our displays to this afternoon. And then tomorrow we'll go back early in the morning and finish putting things in the displays and you know, actually putting my items out. I just don't feel super comfortable leaving my inventory at a place that I'm not familiar with overnight. Like some people I've seen in YouTube videos put like tarps over their things, but I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but anyway, this room is a mess right now. Um, I have all my displays on this back wall behind me. That's all my inventory over there. And then I have more inventory off screen that I need to finish pricing. Um, so I was going to do that, but, um, I think that's all that is going to be in this video today. So, um, I'm not going to do like a time lapse of me pricing stuff. You've already seen that this video. So I figured I would just, um, you know, tell you guys I'm going to film me, um, setting up the displays today and then I will have like a market recap in the next video that's coming. Um, but let me know in the comments. Um, like for the video following my market recap video, what you want to see, if you have any ideas about patterns you want me to test off of like the free amigurumi stuff that I do on Instagram, um, let me know what you want to see. I'd be happy to test some patterns that you guys recommend. I haven't had any recommendations yet and I really want somebody to recommend me a pattern so I can be like, hey, this person, thank you for recommending this pattern. This is how it came out and you know, so on. I, I would really like to test some patterns for my viewers specifically and not just like things that are of interest to me. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and keep an eye out for next week's video for our, my market recap. And then again, just make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more from me in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every Tuesday. And with that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.